Leonid Petrov, who is a senior lecturer at the International College of Management in Sydney and also a visiting fellow at the Australian National University. He joins us live from Sydney. Welcome to the programme. So I'm looking at a media, a media report that says uh, North Korea is warning of a second Korean war. It's blaming the US and also South Korea for inflaming hostilities. These are very bold statements. What do you make of that? Well, North Korea is known for making bold statements. Even the euphemism for Korean War, known as uh, in North Korea as the great victory in the uh, patriotic war. So North Korean regime claims that they actually um, uh, won the war against the United States and the United Nations, um, the 15 nations which participated in the war, including Australia, um, and that the war in the armistice agreement that was a ceasefire it was a stalemate, and um, it's probably the longest uh, ceasefire in, in the history. Uh, 69 years uh, today, um, the uh, military representatives um, of North, North Korea, People's Republic of China, and the United Nations, represented by the U.S. general, uh, signed the uh, armistice, the ceasefire agreement, which was supposed to um, be reviewed and turned into a permanent peace uh, within 12 or 24 months. At that time, Geneva conference was going on, and the expectations were that it would turn into a permanent peace, but it didn't. And why, why, and, why, why um, hasn't that happened? Well, there were too many uh, stakeholders who really wanted the war to continue. Um, despite of the death of uh, Joseph Stalin in 1953, uh, still, the Soviet Union and the United States were in their um, you know, polarizing world with the Cold War confrontation, mm -hmm. and Korea remained divided uh, for the long, uh, a lo a long uh, fifty something years, half a century, until the Soviet Union collapsed, until the until uh, many uh, even the People's Republic of China um, established diplomatic relations with the United States, mm -hmm. but North Korea didn't. There were expectations that. Um, there should be a cross recognition uh, of, um, say, North Korea by the United States and South Korea by the Soviet Union, uh, which happened um, from the point of view of mm -hmm. Moscow and Beijing. But uh, Beijing and Washington DC never recognized North Korea diplomatically. So okay. the uh, division it, remains. Uh, today. It, it remains indeed. And uh, how would you compare um, the efforts of this U.S. administration to the previous one to bring peace and uh, unity to the Korean Peninsula, because you know those images of uh, the former U.S. president uh, visiting the the demilitarized zone are still very fresh and recent in in people's minds. Yes, former uh, U.S. President Trump uh, was much more successful in dealing with North Korea while well, initially confronting Pyongyang with uh, fury and fire. Um, it turned into the um, sort of bromance between Trump and, uh, and uh, Kim Jong-un. But uh, the current uh, president, Joe Biden, actually promised in his, uh, his was electoral promise to confront North Korea and China. And it didn't work well. And we see that currently the US lost its influence, not only over uh, North Korea, but also over China and over Russia. So at the moment, there's no way of uh, Moscow and Beijing uh, supporting anything, mm -hmm. um, which in, in the United Nations Security Council that might potentially come from the U.S. Um, with regards to North Korea denuclearization. Mm -hmm. um, so you so say that it's, it's, the U.S. has it's, lost it's, its, its influence something. over North Korea. Yes, it is. It is, and okay. today is just one uh, one opportunity for North Korea to criticize the U.S. because okay. uh, U.S. South Korean joint military exercises. Um, demonstrates the uh, resolute of South Korea to stay with the U.S. and uh, rather than uh, negotiate with North and um, potentially embrace okay. uh, the reconciliation and permanent peace, unfortunately. Leonid Petrov, thank you very much uh, for all your analysis and insight today on this subject. We appreciate it. Live from Sydney, thank you.